Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike with Mobox. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to get a map zoom animation in After Effects. Now, if you kind of think about this for a few moments, you'll probably come to the same conclusions, but um, hopefully along the way, you'll learn some tips and tricks that I use to get such a smooth animation. So anyways, guys, let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects here and get started. Okay, so first things up, let's create a new composition. And I'm just gonna name this Map Zoom. And I'm gonna leave this at 1080p at 25 frames per second, 30 seconds long, and I'm just going to hit okay. And that's all I do in After Effects right now. Now I need to go actually into Google Maps. So open up a web browser and go to google.com slash maps. So I'm gonna be zooming in all the way into Niagara Falls from about here. So the reason why I picked here was because in Google Maps, it starts adding clouds and I don't really want there to be clouds. So I am going to do it only from about here. Now, I'm not sure of what the usage rights are for Google Maps, but this is just for you know educational purposes. If you're using this in a professional project, you probably wanna use some one of the more professional versions of Google Maps that are specifically used for companies to do kind of this sort of thing, but I'm just using the standard Google Maps as an example. So in Google Maps, there are actually a few options here. So there's maps, satellite, and terrain. You're gonna to wanna to use satellite, and the reason being is that it allows you to turn the labels on and off. So when I turn the labels off, boom, all the labels are gone. So you're gonna to wanna to remember kind of where you're zooming into because when you're zoomed out here, you need to be able to at least kind of identify where it's at. So I'm just gonna start getting some screen captures and I'm just gonna be stitching these screen captures together. So another tip that I like to use within Google Maps is you notice that um, it starts to get kind of blocky when you zoom out and it uses lower resolution maps. But what you could do here is actually in your Google Chrome settings, you can actually hit the zoom out button. And basically what it does is it tricks Google Maps into thinking that you're actually um, using a much higher resolution monitor and it gets higher resolution maps. So even when you're zoomed out here, um, you can see it's slower to load, but you get much higher resolution maps. So um, that's a tip that I use as well. So I use a program called Gyzo. It's called GYZO or GYAZO or something like that. Um, I have a keyboard shortcut to activate it, but basically it's just a, a screen capture software that captures images and then opens it up in a tab in Google Chrome. So it kind of takes a second. One thing you're gonna wanna do though is you're gonna wanna make sure that you actually hit the plus button um, and make sure that this is set to 100% because otherwise you're not gonna get the full resolution image when you right click and save it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make sure that this is as centered in my screen as possible using this kind of Google logo. So I'm just going to speed up through this part, but basically all I'm doing is I'm just zooming in progressively into my target location along the way, taking between four and five screenshots at different zoom levels. And what we're going to be doing is basically just compositing these on top of each other with an After Effects. So as you zoom in, you get a new high resolution image. So you don't get any sort of weird pixelization. Now you notice I'm running a 1440p monitor. That means that when we import it into a 1080p frame, we're going to have a little bit of extra room on the top, bottom, left and right. So in case when I was zoomed out, I wasn't perfectly in the center, I'll have a little bit more real estate to move that image around. So I I don't have to zoom it in to um, then lose resolution that manner. Next, I'm just gonna import these in After Effects and continue on. So I'm just gonna drag all of these into my composition. And you can see here, since they were captured at 1440p or 2560 by 1440, they actually go outside of the 1920 by 1080 frame, which is really nice because that way I have a little bit of room in case I wasn't perfectly in the center of the composition, which you could see here, I slightly was off because this is Niagara Falls and that's the center of the image. Um, so that's good. Now I'm just gonna rearrange these where the first image is on the bottom and the last image is on top. And I'm just gonna make all of them invisible except for the bottom image. Um, next up, I'm gonna create a layer new null object and I'm gonna place that on the bottom. And I'm gonna map, uh, let's see, I'm gonna make the map two visible now. Turn on the visibility. Um, but first actually, let me just decrease the, the opacity of all of these by 50%. So I just selected all of them and hit T on the keyboard and then hit 50. And now we could start kind of the zoom. So I'm just gonna take map one and I'm gonna scale it up maybe like 500%. And that might get us kind of close. Actually, it doesn't get us close at all. Let me bring this up to like a thousand percent. And now we're starting to get a little bit closer. So I'm just gonna take this map and I'm gonna scale this up or down. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move the anchor point. So if I 
choose this pan behind tool or I press Y on the keyboard, I can actually select the anchor point of my second map. So I'm gonna find a, a point on the map that's kind of like easy to identify. One point would be kind of the tip of this lake. And if things keep snapping, you could just uncheck the snapping. I think I'm gonna uncheck it for right now, but I'm just gonna move this, this anchor point to the map. And I'm now gonna scale it down. So basically I'm scaling from that point so I can get this stuff to line up a lot better. Um, now one thing with Google Maps is since the map is actually a globe now, um, some of this stuff won't line up perfectly because when it's zoomed out, it's a little bit more of a globe. Um, but that's fine because um, as you zoom in, you won't really notice it as much and we're gonna feather things up. So I'm gonna take this map too and I'm just going to attach it to map one. So you can see when I zoom out, we have a slightly more detailed portion of the map here. And you can't, you can't even tell that it's kind of bumping up. Um, but what I will do, just in case you ever see anything, I'm gonna just make the first map invisible and I'm gonna select the ellipse tool. With the second map selected, I'm just going to create a mask around it and open up the mask and just add a little bit of feather. Not a lot, just a little bit. And so that way, if there is any sort of visible difference, which you could see there is kind of over here, then it becomes a little bit less noticeable. But I think that that looks like pretty good. Like most people probably won't see any of this overlap. And if they do, I mean, I could just take this and I could, you know, bring this in a little bit. So now that I know that Niagara Falls is actually like right here, I'm gonna move my anchor point there from my original map just so I know that we are constantly gonna be in the center of the composition. So that way when I zoom in and out. So I'm just gonna to continue to zoom this. And I'm gonna now add my third image. Now I zoomed in pretty much almost perfectly there, um, but I'm gonna just do the same thing. I'm gonna move the anchor point to an identifiable position, an identifiable position, which is like the end of this peninsula. Move it into position and I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and just kind of scale up and down until it matches. So this was like a near perfect match as you could see. Hit T on the keyboard, increase the transparency or reduce the transparency and map that to map one again. And if I just scale out map one, so basically we're just gonna be doing again the same thing, lining up the photo, applying scale, increase the transparency back up to 100, parent it to the main map and then add a mask and a feather. And you just continue to do this as many photos as you have. So we'll just speed through this and we're gonna do it on all of the photos. So now if I set this back to 100, in fact, I could even make this less than 100 because I do have a little bit of space. We now could do our zoom animation. Now, if I map this from, you know, kind of 87% to know, 7,000% or 20,000% or 30,000%, you're gonna see that this is gonna look crazy. It just doesn't look good. And even if you add smoothing to this, it doesn't look good. It just, there's just too much zoom to go through. Now that doesn't look too bad, but it, it's, it's, it's way too fast at the beginning and it slows down, I think, way too fast. Um, I don't really like that. You may like that. Certain zooms, depending on how far you need to go in, look better or worse. Um, but what I do is I actually map this to another null or to a null object, and I add scale to both of them. That way I have a little bit finer control because I could zoom this one in, let's say, you know, 2000. And then I could zoom this one in, you know, 2000. And when I add some smoothing to this, I think it looks just a lot smoother. It's less um, abrupt and a, and a jarring. So that's how I do zoom animations. If one of your layers feels maybe like it's a different shade of green or too dark or too light, 
Um, that's a case because the satellite images are taken at different times. Um, you could just drop an HLS balance onto that layer and adjust the saturation, the brightness and stuff like that. And you could even keyframe it if you're going crazy. But uh, one thing I like to do is actually add an adjustment layer on top of the whole thing. Um, you could add a color balance, a noise, and I'm gonna increase the noise by let's say eight. So you get a little bit of noise and you can maybe decrease the saturation a little bit, add a brightness and contrast, maybe increase the contrast here, increase the brightness and the contrast a little bit. Just make it look a little bit crunchier, make the blue look a little bit less kind of cartoony blue. Um, and, you know, mess around with some of these settings here to kind of get the look that um, that you like. And you could even keyframe these. So let's say you want you like the end result, but you don't like the in-between result. Like this looks a little too crunchy for me. You can then just keyframe this. Set those to zero, set this to zero. And add some kind of the same smoothing using the MoGraph Motion 2 tool script. And some of that will um, kind of fade out in the end. Anyways, guys, I know that this was kind of a simple tutorial, but I really hope that you did learn something new and um, learn some new techniques about maybe something you had already been doing already. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.